next I'm going to start showing the applications for the BUG form. Now the BUG form starts the same way as the other two forms up to this point. And that's already been explained in the previous tapes. And again, we could leave off the end of the Chum Q form and this part of the BUG form to link them together so that we could do the form in one long, continuous set of motions instead of stopping and starting each time, repeating the hoist 6 sequence. So the first real difference in the BUG form is during the first punch. Because what I do is I cock my hip backwards and then half pivot punch. Now, after that, I do open my hand and do some other things, but let's just talk about the Huyin Sao itself here closing, and then again, I chamber my hip and pivot punch. So I'm getting that extra in my hip that I didn't do in the previous two forms. In Chum Q, all I did was just pivot from where it was. In Buji, you're actually turning the hip more to start with and then unloading like that. That's to get a little bit of extra power when you know it's safe to do so. And sometimes you don't actually pivot, but you use your hip instead of a pivot. Say, for example, we were closed. Um, in, in a situation like this, when the first punch came in, I used Tanda. All I used was my hips to power that. And that chambered them so that I could unload that hip cock as I threw that second shot. See, my hips did the action of pivoting. And again, they untwisted for that shot. So that would be my hip opening to chamber and then closing to hit. If we were open, the same technique here, my hip was closing to chamber and then opening for the hit. So you use like an abbreviated pivot. Now, I remember I showed you in the second form and the first form, say so we're closed, um, the idea of punching and then opening and pull punch. Okay, that was hidden in the first form. In the second form, it was the same thing but with a pivot. Pivot punch, grab, pivot punch. In the Buji form, that closure of the hand that we're doing can simulate a flesh grab, which I'm going to show you some more of in a minute. But if used with the trauma punch, the same way it's done in the form, it might look like this. Punch, grab some flesh. Now what I'm doing here is I'm punching and grabbing onto the meat of his arm. So you can see I got a hold of his skin. It's not like you're grabbing the whole arm anymore. You dig your fingers in. So you could use it that way. All right, next I'm going to talk about Tang Ji, the springing fingers. So from the punch position, I brace my fingernails against my thumb, and I unload my fingers in a springy unload. Now, the way I would use that motion, for example, when we're open, if I had gotten the punch here, I might go from the lot punch. If I did make contact and pushed him back, I can meet him with those spring fingers. So again, at speed, it's here, push the head back, and then meet the head with the springing fingers. Now, at times you get blocked, but very close to the guy's face. For example, the same situation here, but he blocks very close to his face. I can use that to hit the eyes with my fingers. Or even instead of hitting from there, I could just spring my fingers open and then stab with them, using them as a buji type of motion. All right, next I'm going to talk about what's called nan one, alternating wrist snap. I go up, down, up, down, up, down, then I circle. I go in, out, in, out, in, out, circle. Um, now, you notice that my arm stays completely bent or completely locked, and my wrist does all the work. This is to help you develop a lot of snap in your wrist. Um, they do it while isolating the wrist by keeping your arm locked. You don't have to always have your arm completely locked, but that develops the power. Now, the one where I go side to side could be a couple of things. It could be against a one, two, here. What I would do is snap my wrist one way and then the other. So I went here and then there, and then that helps me to attack. Um, another way of using that same side-to-side -side snap of the wrist would be against one punch here. Use that as the unload of the chop. So the one hand snapped in to block and then snapped out to hit. So you get a lot more snap with your wrist. Now the up-down, up-down one, it, the same idea against the high-low, up and then down, and follow up. So again, I went up here, then down there, and then here. Or it could have been the other way around. It could have been down first, then up, then move in with whatever shot you're going to do. So it's just teaching you to use your hand that way. Or against a single shot, it might just be down, and then up could be actually a hit using the edge of the wrist. So you have different ways of using your hand that way. Now, the, the actually hidden application for these wrist movements is to use your forearm to strike, or your wrist as a strike. Um, sometimes what I'll do is use this motion here to simulate a wrist hit. For example, um, we're open. Gavin gives me the jab. Here, once I've hammer fisted, I can use that to actually strike that snap of my wrist, and I'll either hit the neck, the side of the neck here, or the side of the head, and use it anywhere in there. So you use the 
wrist snapping action to hit him with. Um, another way you might use the forearm or the, the wrist bent like this is to simulate um, grabbing the back of the neck. Um, example, let's say that the first shot came in, jab on the second one, say I went here from the chop, I used that to reverse grab the guy's neck to set up for elbow shots or other things. So turning your hand out like that simulates grabbing the person's neck. Okay, next I'm going to talk about the Byuji form of Huyin Sao, which is different from Siu Lim Tao or Chum Kyu Huyin Sao. Siu Lim Tao Huyin Sao, we just snapped, waited till we were pointed at the floor and then closed. Chum Kyu Huyin Sao, we held the hand open, snapped, circled out past the center and snapped the cross. Byuji Huyin Sao, you snap, circle past the center, squeeze your hand, squeeze it flat, squeeze, release, to develop your grip and strengthen the form and at the same time to simulate different types of grabbing different than what you did at Si Lim Tao or Chum Kyu. For example, with the flesh grabs that we would do in Byuji, um, the idea is to grab with the fingers and squeeze. Now like I showed before, when I punched and he blocked, I could grab onto some flesh and pull the guy into the strike. I mean, sometimes the punch comes and I, I hit the body and then grab onto some flesh there and hit, grab onto some flesh there, hit. So you can actually get a hold of, of flesh. Again from here, once I've hit here, grab onto some flesh grab from here, grab onto the skin, pulling him into the shot. There's different ways. Um, another example for the one, two, here, once I've hit in a position like this, I might grab the flesh underneath the arm and pull him into a shot. Now I'm grabbing the throat. So these kind of grabs are very painful. Um, you can use them in emergency situations. Say I'm being choked. The guy's choking you. Get a hold of some meat, pull onto it until he lets you go. Um, another idea is once he's grabbing you like that, Grab here. It's also very painful and it makes a person want to let you go. Um, on the ground, the same types of things. Person sitting on top of you. When I go down, you know, sometimes you're being choked with things. You can get out of certain types of locks by grabbing onto the meat, causing some pain to the opponent. Even grabbing onto his face or grabbing onto the cheek like that. So anytime you can get a hold of some meat in an emergency situation, sometimes that's what you have to do. Inside of the thigh is very sensitive inside of the bicep is very sensitive. Okay, now that can also simulate grabbing a person's hair. Sometimes you'll grab the hair and pull them into a shot, um, or grab their clothing and pull them into a punch. If you grab a hold of the guy's sleeve and pull him in, or grab a hold of his collar to choke him, those are all considered applications for this movement. All right, next I'm going to talk about Guai Zhan, the downward arcing elbow strike. Now, there's a couple of different ways I like to use this one. Um, for example, one of the times I like to say we're closed. Um, in a situation where I've gone pop down and he blocks me, I can use it to crawl over the top. So, from, for example, from here, I go right over, down, and then up, so that opens him up. Now, I also use it as what's called ding jang or butting elbow. Um, in certain situations, say for example, um, I've come in here and he blocked it, I've come in there, and I've trapped that arm. I can use that to butt him with my elbow, stepping in and hitting him with the point of the elbow without letting go of the arm. So that's one of the ways I like to use that movement. Um, another way I like to use it, for example, say I punch and he blocks. Here, I'll step in, arcing elbow, right to the head. Now, if he managed to block that, here, that's what that second one is for. Again, grabbing, just like in the form. Now, if you notice in the form, I do this, and then at the end, I shoot through like that. So, after having done this, I go into this view cell. Now, that could be, for example, if I had punched and he blocked, and I went here and he did block that one. I could just shoot Bu through right there, and then Bu again, just as it is in the form. Um, if, for example, again here, I shot Bu through and he blocked me, then I could shoot Bu through that way. See? That's another way I might try it. So you can see what happened there. So here, shot through, shot through again. That type of a threading Bu is used in a lot of different situations. Um, whereas before, say we were open, um, I showed you that when he punches here and he blocks this, I showed you to run and then retrap. Or I showed you that you could pull down and punch. In Buji, they teach you that you can view through. So that's another way of getting away from his wusa. So there's a couple of different ways we can use that. Some other ways that I use my elbow um, in the Guaijiang structure is to protect against different types of attacks. For example, when Gavin pulls and tries to elbow the side of my head here, what I might use is Guaijiang to stop it there. So the point of my elbow goes right into his forearm and it's sort of painful then I, I can follow up with different types of strikes. Now, um, I also use it to protect against a headbutt. Um, an example of that is when Gavin you know, gets the back of my neck and he's going to headbutt me. There. 
what I can do at the last minute is drive that in, and that'll protect against the headbutt. He ends up butting into the end of my elbow. So I can use it there. Um, I call that a nose cone defense. In certain emergency situations, like when you're dazed or you've been hit for whatever reason, you're off balance, you can use a nose cone to defend against the guy's punch. Um, an example would be if I'd already been hit and I was a little bit dazed, and he's going to give me the big punch right in the nose. Instead of just standing there and getting hit, what I can do is cover up and put my elbow up in front of my nose. That gives me a little bit of protection. So he's either going to hit right on my elbow, or he's going to glance up and hit the top of my head. Either way, it's better for me than getting hit right in the face. It's not the best block in the world. You don't like to block punches with your head in Wing Chun, but it's better than getting hit. Same thing from when you're on the ground. Um, if I'm down here and Gavin's going to punch me, I can protect again by getting my elbow up in front of my face. So I can use it in that way. Even if the other hand was coming, it wouldn't matter to me. I'm just protecting, and even if he bounces off and hits the top of my head, it's not a problem for me. So I'd, I'd rather get hit on top of the head than in the face anytime. So I use it there to protect myself in emergency situations. Now, if you notice in the form, I come in here, and then I have my other hand chambered, and then I shoot here, and then I shoot another view cell. Now, that can be used in a lot of different ways. Say we're closed. Um, if he gets the punch, and I block it here, I can then grab on and step in, hit him there. Now, you see how my hand is underneath? It's very much like the form, so I could shoot through with the view cell and another view cell. So in that way, all I did was stop it, hit, shoot, and shoot. Okay. Now, it could have been that he tried to stop my elbow, when, once he punched here and he stopped that, then if I wanted to, I could shoot through here and then shoot through again. Or if he stopped my elbow here, I could shoot through, and if he blocks that, then I could shoot through again there. So that's another way I might use that movement. Um, in fact, if we're open and he uses Wu Sa to stop my chop, let's say from the punch, he blocks me there. Well, I showed you earlier that you could pull down and punch at Tsu Tao level, and I showed you that you could run into that. 